Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and today what I want to do is show you guys a uh, open source application for uh, human resource management if you're interested in that, and it's called Orange HRM. Now I'm out on the website. Uh, it is www.orangehrm.com, and uh, you'll notice it does have contact sales and book a free demo. So if you use this for your small business, um, which you can do, and you can use that for small business even with the open source version, which I'll show you how to install, um, you will um, have to contact sales if you want to connect this up to a, um, a pay system so that you can do payroll and things like that. But if, you don't, if you're not interested in that per se, but you just want to see what it'll do, maybe even use it before you uh, take on the uh, non-pay version. You can do that by installing the free and open source version. I've got it installed on bare metal and I've uh, set it up with 15 employees with a fictitious company that I'll, I'll show you when I uh, get to that point in the video. And um, it was very easy to do and it's a great little tool. I think you'll like it. So let's get, let's get on to it here. Um, this website has some information about people management, um, you know, talent management and compensation, uh, payroll connector, this is the payroll connector I referred to, uh, PTO leave management and time tracking, and uh, culture here for performance management, career development and training. All of this is uh, handled within uh, Orange HRM, and um, I'll show you how to install it. So let's go ahead and get over to uh, oh, another website that I want to show you, which is this one. I'll put a link to this in the show notes down below. And this is a website. It's a wiki uh, at opensourceisawesome.com. Great guy who's up on the web, uh, has a uh, YouTube channel. I subscribe to him. And this is where I learned about Orange HRM. So I don't think he's going to mind. I'm going to go ahead and borrow this uh, shell script for installing two things that you'll need. that will actually install more than that. Um, including an Nginx proxy manager, which I have installed in bare metal, and I utilize for my desktop in order to uh, set up a Let's Encrypt uh, secure socket layer encrypted certificate for uh, a subdomain of my domain that I own called dancalloway.com. And I can bring uh, Orange HRM up uh, via the web using that. And so it's a very nice uh, process. I'm not going to do that today. I'm not going to show you how to do that. What I am going to show you is how to install Orange HRM and log into it for the first time and set it up uh, at you yourself as a, an administrative user. And then uh, later on in the video after that, I'll show you how I've set up my 15 employees with a fictitious company. All right, so here's the script. And uh, what this script will do is, as I mentioned, two things that it'll do that's, that is essential is that it will... Um, install Docker CE and also Docker Compose, which you will need to uh, to run a Docker Compose.yaml file that we'll need to create, which will pull down the Orange HRM image and the, uh, the Docker and the Docker Compose images and set those up. Uh, so let's get out on the terminal first of all. And uh, so let me go ahead and get there. And so let me pull the terminal up. Let me increase it in size. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure that this is updated. And so I'm going to clear the screen, clean up a terminal, run a sudo uh, update and sudo upgrade and put a dash Y switch on it so I don't have to answer questions. Put in my password, super secret password for Data Pioneer. And... What did I do? Mistype something. Um, sudo update and sudo. Oh, I'm sorry. Sudo apt update <laughs> and sudo apt upgrade dash y. I've been using a Nala, so it's kind of throwing me off here. And so let me go ahead and put that in and launch it and get this uh, operating system updated. I'm using a virtual machine of Ubuntu. 2204 LTS to demonstrate the installation portion of Orange HRM 
rather than uh, wipe out what I did on my uh, server on the LAN. I don't want to do that because I'm going to be using that to show you uh, the installed version and how I've set it up. All right, so it's uh, updated. Everything's updated. And so let's clean up the terminal, clear the screen. And uh, let's go back out to the website now. And let's grab that, uh, that Bash Shell script. And let me right-click and copy it. And let's come back to the terminal. And let's go ahead and run that. Do a Control Shift V to paste that in. And uh, and so let me go ahead and run that. And it's run now. And so if I do an ls.lh here, you can see that we have um, the install script right here. So let me go ahead and copy that because I'm going to need it here in a moment. And so let me copy it. And now what I need to do is make that shell script executable. So I'm going to do a sudo chmod plus x to make it executable and then control shift v to copy it in or paste it in and uh, run that against that file so now it should be executable so let's check it and it's green and it is does have the executable bits in it so uh, it can now be executed so let me go ahead and clear the screen and let's clean up the terminal and let me run the uh, the script all right, so I'm going to do a dot forward slash, which is how you run a shell script, and install underscore docker underscore in proxy man dot sh is the file, and let's go ahead and run it. So it's running now. First thing it's going to ask you is what operating system are you running? And so I, as I indicated, I'm running an Ubuntu 2204 LTS VM. So I'm going to choose option number four here, and hit enter. It asked me if I want to install Docker Community Edition. I do, so I want to say yes. Uh, asking me if I want to create or install, rather, Docker Compose. Yes, I do. And since Y is the first option, I just, all I have to do is hit Enter. Uh, do I want to install Proxy Manager? No, I do not in this video. It's beyond the scope of this video. And the Navadrome, I do not either. So I'm going to hit N and hit Enter. Portainer, I use that, but I don't want to install it here, so I'm going to go ahead and hit N and Enter. And so now it's going to go out and start installing Docker CE and Docker Compose. And this is going to take a little while, so I may stop the video and uh, pick it up after the installation is completed. We'll just see how long it's going to take here. If, it, if it's going to take too long, I don't want to bore you with it. All right, so it's installing the Docker CE Community Edition right now. It already installed the prerequisite packages that were needed, and that's what's nice about the shell script is that it went out and grabbed all the prerequisites that we need uh, before we install these things, and uh, makes it easy. So that's why I wanted to use it here. And um, I think I will uh, go ahead and shut down the video, and I'll come back when this is completed. Okay, I'm back. Now it's uh, completed the Docker uh, CE and it uh, created the Docker network and installed Docker as well. So it has completed the process and um, I did not, as I indicated, did not install the Nginx Proxy Manager. It's a great tool. Highly recommend it and uh, perhaps later I'll show you how to I, I utilize Nginx Proxy Manager. Uh, for a lot of my Docker containers, for all of them actually, um, so that I can uh, make them secure and access them via the web. All right, so now that I'm done with that, let me go ahead and um, clear the uh, terminal, clean up the screen, and um, let's get back here. And so let me just, I'm just following the rest of the directions here. One of the things I encountered uh, when I installed this script, however, is I so let me get back in, is the Docker Compose did not install for some reason. The CE edition did not install in Ubuntu. Not sure why, so I had to reinstall it again. And so let me go back out here and um, let me just do a sudo apt install docker. All right, and go ahead and install that. Want to continue, yes. 
and it shouldn't give me any problems this time. So it looks like Docker is installed now. And so let's um, clean up the terminal, clear up the screen, clean up the terminal. And now the next thing we'll need to do here is we'll need to make a directory, a Docker directory, and we'll also need to make a, an, an orange HRM directory, subdirectory of that here in where, where we are, which is in my home directory here in Ubuntu, which is Home Data Pioneer. All right, so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a make, I'll do a sudo make uh, dir, and I'm going to do a dash p because what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to create the directory docker and the subdirectory orange hrm simultaneously, not uh, in two separate steps. And so I'll just do a docker uh, forward slash orange hrm here and um, hit enter. And so that should have created it. Let me run a listing of that, listing out the storage. And you can see we do have a docker folder here. And if I do a cd into docker um, and run an lslh against this as well, you can see that now we do have the orange hrm directory subdirectory. I do need to get into that as well. So let me just cd into orange hrm. And let's learn a listing of that. And you can see that that is totally empty. All right. So the next thing we need to do here is we need to uh, create a Docker Compose YAML file. And this is the YAML Docker Compose file that we're going to be creating here. Uh, and so to do that, I'm going to use my favorite editor, um, text editor, called nano and so I'm going to run this command right here which is nano docker dash compose dot dot yml and uh, and that's going to create that file so let me clear the screen clean up the terminal and let me do a sudo nano uh, docker dash compose dot yml hit enter and so that opens up the editor and so that's the file that we're working with right here docker compose yaml all right and so let's go grab that image and the yaml code rather and uh, which has the image in it for orange hrm and let me right click and copy that go back out to the terminal here and let me uh, right click and paste that in and so here it is and let's come to the top of that file and so this is version 3.3 and let's go through this line by line and i'll show you what you need to modify and so the services here are the orange HRM. This is the image it's going to grab, which is orange HRM, orange HRM latest version. And we're going to restart that and less stopped. And I like it uh, to be done that way. Uh, there are two different ways you can do a restart. You can do a restart uh, or just a restart and less stopped, which means here that unless I stop, um, this manually, the uh, orange HRM, and tell it to restart. If it gets interrupted in some way, disconnected, uh, it will restart unless I've manually stopped it. And so that's the way I would like to have it. So let's come down to the port section. And you've got two sides to this with uh, divided by a colon. The left-hand side is the external ports. The right-hand side is the internal. You don't want to touch the internal ports. This is what the application sees. And so it runs on port 80, and then for secure, it runs on port 443. Uh, I know I'm using 8200, so I'm going to go ahead and change this to 8380. All right, and then I'm going to come down, and I'm going to change this, just to be consistent, to 8343. All right, so externally, it's 8380 if it's just HTTP, and if I ran Engine X Proxy Manager and set up a secure site, it would be 8343, would be how I accessed it via the web. Let's come down further here in the environment section, and the MariaDB is the host. Uh, the username here, I'm going to give this uh, as Data Pioneer. All right. And then for the password, I'm going to give it a strong password, not the one that's in here. And um, doesn't matter if I expose it here because I'm going to destroy this anyway. And so I'm going to type in my password is my first capital L zero V E my first love capital W at was 
okay and then capital M at th so my first love was math is my uh, password going to come down here and the database name is orange HRM leave these alone the 998 and 100 for PUID PGID the volumes here uh, this is correct all right leave that alone then come on down to the Maria DB section or the Maria DB however you want to pronounce it it's also going to restart unless stopped and then uh, come down to the environment section and here we need to give it a password and so we're going to use the same password that we have up here and so I'm going to go ahead and copy it right click and copy and then come down here right click and paste paste that same password in there the user here for the root is going to be I have to come up and it's going to be root all right for the root user uh, and that's due to privileges permissions and then the database itself is named orange HRM that's correct so that this is uh, all that we have done this is the entire file we can go through it again here real quick 8380 looks good 8343 data pioneer is the username got my password in there um, I've got um, I've replicated that root password for the database got the root user as root and so we're good to go so let me come back up to the top of the file do a control X get out of the file save the modified buffer um, do a Y yes you want to write the same file docker dash compose dot yaml hit enter say yes uh, for yes there and so yeah that uh, save that file out so now that file has been saved and so the next thing we want to do we come down in the list of uh, instructions here is we want to run this docker dash compose up so we want to bring docker compose up and then we want to use a dash d which is going to uh, run it as a daemon means running in the background so if i close the terminal it'll still be running and um, and it's going to run against that yaml file so we need to be in the same directory and we will be uh, so let me go back here to the terminal and so we are in the same directory we're in where the uh, well we can prove that and so there's the docker compose yaml file and so I'm going to run the command sudo docker dash compose uh, dash d or up rather dash d so we're going to bring it up and then I'm going to have it run as a daemon I uh, can't find it for some reason and this happened before so let me try this again sudo um, apt install docker oh I need I need to restart that's why so let me do a um, exit the terminal okay and so I think that's going to fix it if it doesn't we'll reinstall it again let me bring this up again to full screen so you can see it and so now we need to uh, we're back at home data pioneer so I need to go back into docker uh, orange HRM where the YAML file is and let's run that sudo docker uh, compose up dash D and put in my super secret password can't find it so let's do a sudo apt install docker compose I think I ran docker the last time instead of docker compose and so that's the problem yep now it's installing the way it should you may encounter this and if you do that's all you need to do clear the screen clean up the terminal now let's uh, we're still in that directory where the YAML file was and so now let's run sudo docker compose up dash D and so now it's pulling down the Maria or Maria DB database server image it's installing that setting it up and when it completes that then it will pull down the orange HRM and do that same thing with that image as well and so now it is I believe it's pulling down the orange HRM yes it is okay and um, 
Docker is a great thing because you can run all your Docker applications this way without having to run a flat pack or uh, an app image or some other type of installation. I like Docker images, Docker containers. I use Portainer typically when I do it um, on a Raspberry Pi, but I wanted to install this on the, in a VM to show you how it works. And this particular YAML file will not install in a, in a Raspberry Pi. That's why I'm not doing it that way. All right, so you get two dones here. You get done, done, and done. Okay, and when you get that, you need to wait about two minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and exit, not exit, I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen, clean up the terminal. And I'm going to wait about two minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and come back, and then uh, we'll continue from there. Okay, I think we waited long enough. I'm back now, and uh, so the next step we need to take is to go out to the website, to the IP address of the virtual machine in this case, or your server, whatever it is that you've got um, Orange HRM installed on, or will have it installed on, uh, but now have a Docker CE and Docker Compose installed on. So let's uh, go out to the terminal, and we need to find the IP address of our virtual machine in this case. And to do that, I'm just going to run IPA and uh, come up and under ENS33, uh, the IP address is right here, INET. So it is uh, 192.168.1.215. So I'm going to do a copy of that. Come down and clear the screen. Clean up the terminal and then go back out here to uh, the web. And let's go over and cl click on a no new tab. And so I'm going to type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and uh, paste that IP address in there that we just obtained. And then go out to, if you recall, port 8380 was what I gave it, external. All right. And here we are. So it pulled up, uh, running in Docker, the uh, orange HRM. Uh, image uh, for the installation. And so this is the install wizard for Orange HRM and it's starter version 5.3 setup wizard. Alright, so you can do one of two things here uh, at the welcome screen. You can do a fresh installation or you can do upgrade an existing. Alright, so we're going to do a fresh install because we don't have an existing. So I'm going to leave it there and come over and click next. And then this is the license that we need to accept. This is a GNU general purpose license, uh, version 2, uh, dated June 1991. You can read that at your leisure. Uh, I've already read it, so I'm going to go ahead and accept and click Next. And then the database configuration is the next step. We're in here, step 3. And so this is either using a new database or an existing. So we're going to click existing empty database because remember we set up the MariaDB database. All right, so the database host name is one thing we need to find here because I don't recall what it is. So let's go back out to the terminal. And the way to do that is to run command docker dash compose. Um, I think I need sudo here because I haven't uh, set myself in the, assigned myself to the docker a group sudo docker compose ps and it brings up here the first entry is the host name that I need so let me go ahead and right click and copy that and then go back out here and paste it in All right. so we've got that pasted in it's uh, looking at uh, database port uh, 3306 that's correct the database name is Orange HRM. Okay. The uh, database username um, is. Well, actually, hold on a minute. The database name is Orange HRM. The database username is uh, root. And uh, the password is the password that we uh, gave it here and let's go back to look at the file the yaml file cat the um, docker compose dot yml file and here it is and so let me grab that password and 
copy it and let's go back out and let's paste it in and paste it in right there and uh, let's go ahead and enable data encryption all right and let's go ahead and click next and let's save that information so now it's going to bring us to step four which is the system check and everything should be green over here and it is and so if it's, everything's green it means we're good to go so let's click next and now it's asking us to create the instance of uh, RNGHRM so for an organization name I'm going to tell it Acme Incorporated okay and then for country code, or country rather, you can't type it in, you have to down arrow and then scroll down and select the country, United States. And so put that in. And then the language, you have to scroll down also and pick English, United States for my, for my preference anyway. For time zone, uh, I am in America time zone, New York, specifically so I'm going to scroll down to America New York and select it and let me see if I can find it here and where is it come on come on there it is America New York all right so once I got that selected click next now we need to create that admin user so I'm going to put in my name email address all right and then an admin username I'm gonna give it data pioneer and then uh, put in the password I don't want to use this password that's the database password and so I want to put in a, a new password for my user let me just go ahead and put that in match I do not want to register this system with uh, orange HRM because um, to do that it would be paid version I don't want to use the paid version even though it's open source I can use the open source with free of charge and so I'm going to click next here and save that now I'm going to confirm everything that's on here so this is the host name that looks good database host port that looks good database name is good privileged user is root uh, the admin user is Data Pioneer, and then its uh, data encryption is turned on, which is exactly what we want. We're in step seven, so I'm going to click Next here, and it's starting its installation process. So uh, it's going to apply the database changes. It's going to run the instance and the admin user creation. It's going to create the Orange HRM database user and then create the configuration files. So we're at 98% now, and this runs pretty quickly. So I'm not going to have to pause the video again. Um, and so when this is completed, then I'll log in for the first time to Orange HRM. All right, so it's finished. All check marks here, all green. Let's click Next. And it says installation is complete. And let's launch Orange HRM. All right. And there we are. So we're, this is Orange HRM interface uh, at 192.168.1.215, which is the IP address of my Ubuntu virtual machine. It's on port 8380. All right. So the username, if you recall, is Data Pioneer, and the password that we gave it was my super secret password. Let me put that in and log in. All right, so this is the admin portal for Orange HRM. Now, this is completely configurable. Uh, and uh, so we have logged in for the first time. And so for the remainder of this video in part two, what I'm going to do is switch over outside the VM and go to the bare metal install. It's already been set up with all the users. I've got 15 employees in a fictitious company called CRW Incorporated. And we'll go from there. So I'll catch you on the other end.